Hello beautiful people. Thank you for tuning up my channel. Uncle Sam's Travel. Let's go to Hello and good morning from Kotor Bay. An Italian word they call Boca Kotorska means the mouth of Kotor. Kotor basically a winding bay and it is connected with Adriatic Sea. Along to this winding bay you will find a lot of a small town just like uh, one of them called Lipsi which is I am living in there. Another one called Piras, Harzenovi, Tivat, uh, Risan, Marinj. And today I am going to bring you to the Kotor Old Town. And that is just the other side if you're looking that mountain right there. Yes, that exactly that spot. Today is a beautiful warm day. I, I think I should go to the beach and lay down there and swim. The water is warm, but I can do that later on. I definitely need to go first Kotor town and the old town. Today is look fantastic. So let's start driving. I'm here in the mall, Kotor Mall. Kotor has a lot of small shops around the whole town, but this is the only mall they have. And this mall is, I think it's the name called Camellia. You know, Kotor is not really a big city. It only has 23,000 people live with, together with other municipality. And why I'm in the mall? Because I need to change my US dollars to Euro. Because here everything is Euro. Even Montenegro is not under European Union, but Euro is a basic currency. I already changed my US dollars to Euro. Now I'm walking towards to the old town. Once I get to the old town, I am looking for how to get into the entry to the Kotor Fortress, which is the, about, I believe, 1200 meters uh, from the sea level or 3937 foot high. Now from here, you can see that uh, the wall and that is the one I want to hide. This is the parking prevention mechanism. Uh, basically it's known as a called folding parking post. They put it there. What? Stop? Park? No. Okay. And this was a lay down means you can go and come out easily. But you see there is another one stick up. That one, that parking uh, spot is open but nobody can park. I'm glad that I parked my car, residential area, as a far away from here, about 10 minutes. Arrived in front of the main gate. I believe uh, Kotor Old Town has a three gate. So this is one of the main one. This water is coming through the mountain and it is ending up in a Kotor Bay. Kotor Fortress should be somewhere around there. You see that straight right there. I can see those wall winding up all the way up to the mountain. I have noticed something. In most European city they have a lot of uh, river goes uh, pass through the town and the water is very clean. I have feelings about this uh, hike that probably going to be a daunting. Historically stated that this uh, Kotor, the southern part of especially this city actually was started ruled uh, by human 10,000 years BC and the Roman rules 167 BC till 475 AD. Then comes the Austro-Hungarian Empire and they also rule in this place. During 15th century there was a huge earthquake and that earthquake actually destroyed so many buildings including the churches and everything. And I believe they tried to uh, recover that between 1584 through the 1613 they built up the city again. Beside. 1979, the latest, that was another earthquake which was really also devastated. And they built again. 
Now, if you're looking at this buildings and architect, it's most likely Italian touch. You know, if somebody blindfold me and then tell me, hey, tell me what place is this? And I open my blindfold, I'll, I'll easily gonna say this is somewhere in Italy. You know, the influence in this uh, country, lots of Italian influence, even in the food culture. I need to find the uh, fortress entrance. Okay, this is the entrance. And right now it's about 12 noon and it will take me two hours probably. Sometimes they say, depends how much time you take a rest and you go up and that could be two and a half hours. It depends on your health situation. Uh, so it's a two hours take me. Uh, right now it's a 12 noon, so I'll be reached there by two o'clock. The problem is the humidity. Today is about 35 degrees Celsius, which is means about 90, 93 probably Fahrenheit. Now when you come here, make sure you're wearing a, a good comfortable shoes. Don't wear a high heel, okay? This is not the place for a high heel. Because I just saw a few minutes ago, a lady was taking a picture with a high heel. Then I realized, oh, it was actually a wedding uh, glamour shot they're taking. Oh my God, it's already six minutes and I'm already tired. You know, this humidity is killing me. I mean, I need to go two hours. So minus six minutes from the two hours. It's one hour, 54 minutes more to go. But you know what? It's going to pay off when you go all the way up. It's going to be beautiful view. I have actually prepared myself. I have my hat, my sunglasses, my uh, sunscreen lotion. So I think it will keep me going. I think the most crazy things to do when you come around noontime in a summer and it's a 95 degrees outside and humidity and you try to go hike up, that's a stupid things to do. Never do it. Come here seven in the morning or eight in the morning you're already up because coming down is not a problem going up is really gonna be daunting so uh, if you're coming early morning it's uh, still cool weather it's still uh, pleasant and it's better during noon time or anything before uh, five o'clock it will be really hot either you come after five or you come before nine o'clock and do this trip because this is really lots of steps. It's about 1,350 steps, but I believe actually more than that. Another thing, I heard that there's an $8 entrance to coming here. And then I asked uh, one lady uh, in the town square, uh, this lady, she was very nice to me. And she told me, no, there is no any entrance fee because it's illegal. If anybody taking entrance fee from you, it is not official. However, if you just uh, keep going up and you pass this church, there will be uh, some people uh, selling from the ice chest uh, bottles of water, uh, beer, all kind of things. And they charge you a little bit more money. I think they're just living for that. You know, it's pretty hard to go all the way up, bring an ice chest and try to sell some drinks, which is not bad, you know, which is okay. But I also heard that there's some people they try to ask you entrance fee up there and otherwise you cannot get in. I do not know if it is true, but I don't think so because I didn't see anyone. Well, 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 you have no idea how many times I stop and I rest. Three to four minutes I rest, then I keep going. I'm sweating like a pig. It's really crazy, this humidity, you know. Again, don't come here during summer on the high noon. I am in the high noon right now, 12 noon. I came here. That's the most stupid thing I think I ever done. Never do it. Come in the early morning. Again, come in the early morning or in a cooler day. Okay. Check your weather before you come up. But another thing, if you go all the way up, basically the view is more smaller. It's no make any sense. There is nothing up there. It's only a small one building and that's it. But the most view that you can see beautiful from here in this level. You don't need to go all the way up if you don't want to go. But if you insist, that's fine, you can go. I stop right here. This is a little bit terrace here. Perfect place for photograph, right here. Chornaguria! Privet! 
you know what kind of plant is it pomegranate tree this tree in Montenegro I mean I've been to so many places in Montenegro and I noticed this tree grow here like a bush now it is almost four o'clock I'm going down to the town and I'm gonna look for some restaurants maybe seafood restaurants but you know going down is not a problem uh, even if it's a little hotter humidity I just can imagine that 12th century you know thousand years ago how people make this fortress to just watching over the bay to make sure there is no enemy coming and invade them stray cats in a Europe is from century especially in a Kotor this old town this cat is a symbolic here and they believe that they're helping with the rats invasion and the snakes coming from the mountain they're helping so cats are very welcome even the souvenir store you go you're gonna see lots of cat a miniature uh, souvenir you can buy but let's find a restaurant I am looking for some restaurant not so expensive but I can happy with it this is the main square in the old town you can see a lot of restaurants around boutique shop a small church in this side you see that mountain up there I just came from there right there I just came from there you see that oh my god that was so daunting again never go on it during summer at noon time okay I was stupid to do that oh there's another church on the other side I heard this church was demolished uh, on earthquake and they rebuilt it again here go I found some restaurant oh, price look good Cesarica okay let's move on I would like to order some black risotto and those are famous here and I heard it's very delicious and some maybe fried anchovies it's a hot day you know it's uh, maybe I don't know it's like a 95 maybe Fahrenheit something like that waiting for my food it's a nice little cozy restaurant in Kotor in the corner in the side you know you need to walk there find some restaurant no people here Wow result of the whole pan is here Wow salad and then fried uh, anchovies look at this risotto oh my god there's a lot you know this risotto basically uh, cooked from the squid ink and they're healthy they're not bad Oh, look at this fish they're pretty big I mean I eat a lot of anchovies but this is pretty big size I love anchovies with beer cold beer and the salad is fresh those olives look gorgeous I can smell olive oil Ooh. this restaurant is so cozy you know it's nice in the corner it's set up on the street there is also inside you can eat but the, look at this alley beautiful you can see through that mountain up there and we have a beautiful lady here what's your name Christina Christina the thing I noticed in the part of Kotor their people are very friendly they're warm and um, they're helpful that's great and Christina Bob brought this food so quick and fast Wow all right thank you so much Bye. Christina <laughs> appreciate you. it This black risotto is good. I think uh, this black risotto made with uh, squid ink, which is, you know, when you cut the squid, there's some black ink come out. And that's they use it to make the color black. So I have here some, uh, you can see, anchovies. Fried, deep fried. Mmm. Good. And some black risotto. Salad. 
Mm-hmm. It's really good. Right inside the old town. You guys can come here and uh, enjoy, you know. Price is pretty good. Seafood is special is this restaurant. When you come to the downtown, um, I mean the old town, you turn right from the gate. You're coming inside, big square. And they're right in the corner. I got my uh, bill, salad, sardinas, black risotto, and beer. This comes about 30 euros. 30 euros. Not bad, I mean, you know, probably Montenegro is a little pricey, but obviously it's better than France or Germany or England. More expensive, but compared with them, uh, Montenegro is still cheaper. Uh, it also depends uh, where are you eating. This is tourist spot, so you cannot expect cheap. It has to be expensive. And it's not only Montenegro. Anywhere you go, a tourist area is always an expensive place. Now, you can go something local people eat and no tourists. Then you're going to be see there dramatic price change. Actually, near to my apartment, there's a restaurant. I mean, it's still some tourists go there, but it's not so famous. The restaurant is so big. At the same price that I pay here, over there in the same price, I had more options, more beer, more, more, uh, more food. Uh, I mean, much better food, which is means I had ordered other day, 30 euros was uh, a squid a pizza and a fish and beer and a water bottled water all together I pay about that much of money so as it depends where you go I think I enjoy my uh, food here today this hot weather is uh, not bad it's fantastic Every restaurant now they have uh, little things uh, to you know, sanitize your hand. After COVID-19, you need to do this. And when I was eating my sardinas, I see three or four cat scrolling around me. I give them few, and they fight each other. They, they want the other cat one is my fish, and the other cat is my fish. So I try to give all the cat. I got four cats, I get four fish, yeah, you know, but it's nice. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you later. And thank you for watching Uncle Sam's Travel. I do really appreciate it. If you subscribe, then you will be the first to notify. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up. I really do appreciate that. Thank you.